Hanshi Kiowa. Hello, how are you all? Welcome to Homelands, originally broadcast on CFCR Community Radio 90.5 FM in Saskatoon, Homelands of the Métis and Treaty 6 Territory, cfcr.ca. This is your favorite auntie, Andrea Letting Dishni Kashun. My name is Andrea Letting. Call me Auntie Andy if you like, and I'll be your host over this next half hour. I am part settler, part relative, and 100% ally and relation to every, everyone. I'm just me, not a card-carrying member of any Indigenous nation, but I am loved, adopted, related to, and accepted by many, rejected by a few, haters gonna hate, relators gonna relate. I am blessed to have Indigenous relations in my family and secretly may love them a little bit more than all the rest, only because they're the first peoples of this land who welcome all the guests. But I'm also uh, of Irish and Scandinavian descent, along with a little bit of mystery, and that's the way I was raised, strongly anti-colonial and justice-oriented, with a big related heart for all. I most empathized with my Batash Métis friends and family and that history, history and culture growing up, and as an adult, have continued to try to live that meal permits when that beautiful good life. So from the fringes of the sash, I situate myself as a relative and an ally and welcome you, my listeners, as brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins in the homelands. So let's welcome our relative tonight. We have with us today Autumn LaRose Smith, and she is the brand newly elected uh, youth president of the Métis Nation Saskatchewan uh, Council. And so I'm really excited to, to hear more from her and about her. And I'm going to let her kind of introduce herself, where she's from and her life so far, what she's doing and all of that kind of thing. So over to you, Autumn. Go ahead. Oops, you're on mute. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And, and that was a uh, really amazing introduction to a radio show, probably my favorite that I've heard uh, so far. Um, and thank you so much for having me on today. So uh, my name is Autumn Laro smith a uh, proud queer Métis student uh, living in Saskatoon, and I attend the uh, Saskatchewan Urban Native Teachers Education Program, or SUNTEP. Um, I currently work for We Matters, the program's an outreach administrator, um, but most recently uh, I was elected elected as the uh, president of the Provincial Métis uh, Youth Council for the Métis Nation Saskatchewan, so uh, the, the first um, elected president in, in this role, uh, and, and really excited to, um, to serve the Métis youth over the next four years and um, uh, do whatever I can to, to amplify uh, Métis youth voices in Saskatchewan and uh, transform the youth council and, and connect Métis youth to each other and to, to culture and, and uh, all the amazing programs and services. So very excited and thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, Autumn. Um, so I'm really excited to hear more about your, your path towards politics. How did you get interested in, in this position and, and, and kind of, you know, politics in general? Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I, I'm not too sure how, <laughs> what led me here. To be honest, I am really passionate about helping, um, helping community and just people in general. Um, and I always joke that volunteering is, is my hobby um, because if I have spare time somewhere, then I'm always looking somewhere if I can go volunteer um, just for one day or for an event or for an initiative or um, as part of a board. So I sit on the, the board uh, for Out Saskatoon and, and I sat on the board for the Nest Creek uh, Recreational or uh, Nest Creek um, uh, music festivals board. Um, I sat on that for four years. Um, I sat on the board for the University of Saskatchewan uh, um, as president of the University of Saskatchewan Students Union, um, which I was also the first Indigenous woman to be elected into that role as well. So um, really, I think um, how I've, I've come into politics, uh, I suppose, is is just through um, the work that I've done in the community and, and having um, members of community recognize that and, and ask me to run. I really, um, it, it was a big decision for me to decide to run for the president of the Métis Nation Youth Council um, because I love my job, my current job so much. Um, and I knew that if I ran, um, because the, the president's position is, is, is uh, such an important role um, in, in establishing, uh, and really um, the, the first, uh, what my term is going to be is, is creating that, uh, the, all the foundational work that's needed for me to youth in Saskatchewan within the MNS. So I knew that it was going to be uh, probably more than a full-time job. And so, uh, of course, wanting to make that my priority and, and leaving my job, but um, I did it because I was asked because Métis Youth reached out to me and, and asked me to do it and um, and that was the same when I when I ran for president of the University of Saskatchewan Students Union uh, I was asked um, by students and so um, I, yeah it's just I guess that's kind of how what's leaded me in this direction I I never intended to go into politics and even um, 
I, I don't even consider myself to really be a part of politics, although I know that I'm in a, a position that was is elected and I had to run a campaign, but really I see it as um, being a job. Um, and, and that's something that I ran for too, is that um, absolutely elected officials, um, they're politicians, but um, they do, they, they're working full time or they should be working full time for, for the people who elect them. So to me, it's, it's, it's a job, but Métis youth in Saskatchewan are my bosses. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I don't really know. I've my whole life um, since I was young, um, you know, I have a memory of uh, being in, in uh, the YMCA daycare. Um, and for some reason I was helping out in, in the baby's room. I was, I was under five years old, but, um, I was helping out in the baby's room. And I remember, um, being told that I was the only, only kid allowed in the baby's room because I just wanted to help so badly. Um, and because I was being helpful and I always volunteered in, in the kitchen to make those meals, even, even at, uh, five years old in the daycare. So I don't know what it is, um, born with it and, and encouraged by, by family. So that's probably what got me to where I am today. That's awesome. Great stories. Um, tell us a little bit more about like your family. Like it sounds like you were maybe raised in Saskatoon. Where is your community? Where, where's your kind of community from and your family from and that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born and raised in, in Saskatoon um, and my mom uh, worked and my mom's been working for uh, Métis organizations um, long before I was even born. And so I was raised um, by the Métis local that I'm a part of and, and volunteered and I grew up um, volunteering um, at, at all of the community events and um, I remember being uh, really little for the Métis locals uh, Christmas nights and then when I hit the ripe age of 13 all of a sudden I became a, a volunteer elf and so um, start transitioned into you know uh, volunteering for the elders Christmas nights and, thing, and things like that so I've always uh, grown up around it. My, my family um, and my mom and the rest of my family originally, um, they're from Battleford. That's where my mom grew up and she moved to Saskatoon when she was a little bit older. And so now I have uh, uh, aunties and uncles all over Canada, actually. My, my grandma has uh, 13 siblings, so they had 14 kids, including my grandma. Um, and really, I have them all spread out throughout Canada. So when we get together for a family reunion, it's uh, really, really bringing everyone from from all from all provinces, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I so I'm a uh, urban urban indigenous woman, Métis woman, and and that's kind of the roots that I know. Um, doing whatever I can to um, find opportunities to connect with the land um, outside of the city, but um, we know that that can be a barrier for a lot of uh, young indigenous people. But um, so I try my best to do do that. But really, Saskatoon is my roots. Um, and then I always like to introduce myself as a, a proud uh, queer uh, Métis woman because I think uh, they, they all, uh, those identities really intersect. And so, um, you know, part of that is being on the, the board of board for Out Saskatoon um, and doing what I can to volunteer and, and support the queer community in Saskatoon because they've, uh, a queer community in Saskatoon has been uh, kind of like my other, my other family, my second family as well. So um, that's kind of a little about, about me. Um, but, you know, my, my Métis roots, um, they, I have traced them back to um, same, uh, places in, in Manitoba and, and Quebec and so uh, and even uh, Montana and actually, actually just recently learned that I have a relative who, who's living in Washington state so that's really cool to learn. Right on so, so what are the so is La Rose the, the the Métis name or are there other family names or what are some of the yeah my um so LaRose on my mom's side and then Smith is is my dad's side and my um on my dad's side my cookum is uh Senator Nora Cummings so yeah. um who's um so have very strong uh Métis Métis roots and and Senator Nora Cummings is um uh you know nationally recognized as a as a Métis leader and advocate and so kind of growing up with that influence uh, definitely shaped um who who I am and and my ability to to proudly be Métis um and everything that I do wow yeah that's pretty serious pedigrees uh, Senator Nora is just one of my favorite people I just love her so that's awesome um, so tell us more about what you think, uh, or what you've heard from the youth might be some of the issues or, or, or even what you've experienced. I don't know if you guys have had meetings yet, but kind of some of the, some of the hot topics or. Yeah. So, um, I'm in the process right now, um, uh, 
to of just getting onboarded into my position and then the next steps is making sure that the council is uh, the youth council is running really uh healthy and strong um so that we can ensure that youth voices from all over saskatchewan are being uh represented but um so that's kind of one of the main platforms um one of my main points of my campaign was just um, transform, transforming the youth council into being a really serious driver for change for youth so that um, concerns that youth have can can really be brought forward in a, in a powerful way. Um, I know uh, mental health is a very serious concern um, for uh, Indigenous youth all over Canada and especially Métis youth. And so um, that's actually part of my, my job at We Matter. It's a, a national Indigenous youth-led uh, organization that um, to support and create mental health resources, um, specifically for Indigenous youth. So hoping to, you know, bring in um, the work that I've done in, in other positions um, and use that as a way to support Métis in Saskatchewan. Um, sustainability and environmental advocacy is really important. Um, from when I've, what I've talked to Métis youth. Um, and I also that uh, connecting to culture and, and exploring our identities, I think is really important. Um, you know, the, the Métis nation, Saskatchewan, I think they have a huge priority of um, increasing their MS and reg um, registration for citizens. They really want to see that increase um, because they know that there's a lot more Métis uh, in Saskatchewan, um, we, but our, our, the numbers in citizenship uh, doesn't reflect that. Um, that's uh, I, that's not necessarily my first priority, um, although I think that uh, increasing citizenship is really important. Uh, my first priority is just um, finding ways to connect with Métis youth and um, in, a, in a meaningful way and building that relationship and trust so that um, the MNS does become something that they want to register for. Um, I think that needs to needs to come first. And, and I think part of that is um, finding opportunities to explore uh, and learn about our culture and our history and our traditions, because, you know, even uh, I th I th we're all still learning um, and I'm still learning as well and, and in the process of reclaiming um uh my culture and my history so i think that's yeah kind of where i want to start for the first little bit but um i know that um uh, Métis concerns in the north are, are a lot different than Métis concerns in the south and so um ensuring that uh Métis youth have um, their voices are, are represented in a meaningful way and that um, they're given uh, a platform um, where they can create change for themselves and, and for their specific communities. And, and so I, because I grew up in, in Saskatoon, I have no lived experience of uh, Métis from Isle Cross. And so I'm not going to go in there and say, this is what you guys need to do, but really it's um, listening to what, what they want happen and then doing whatever I can to make it happen uh, alongside them. Right on. Um, yeah, I was so I was thinking about uh, kind of, you know, some of your experiences to date, like a lot of leadership roles and um, and being asked by the community. I think that's true leadership. And then I was also thinking about, you know, like we're recording this the day after Louis Riel Day. So, um, yeah. Did you have any kind of thoughts about that kind of history or Louis Riel or, you know, just like Louis Riel was asked to be a leader? You know what I mean? Like it's it's kind of cool. And, and also the women have have traditionally been very strong leaders, like all the men that were leaders listen to women, right? So yeah, I don't know if you have any kind of thoughts on that or the importance of, of representation and also being a queer Indigenous woman and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, I did an interview yesterday with APTN, although I don't know if it aired. And one of the things that I said about, you know, the significance of honoring Louis Riel is because um, Louis Riel has been uh, a symbol of the of the reclamation and the strength of Métis people um, surviving and um, finding ways for our culture and our language to survive um, through, uh, through genocide and continued genocide. Um, and so I think to me that, you know, honoring uh, leaders in our past and our ancestors who fought so hard to secure rights for Métis people and to ensure that we were um, to be able to live freely and openly about who we are, I think is really important. And so um, in my work too, uh, you know, I, I actually just today, the University of Saskatchewan um, hosted an information session about uh, Métis sashes. Um, and so, you know, going out of my way to eat, to um, to go to those kind, to different kind of talks to learn more about my culture and, and to honor those um, who um, who've passed and, or who are in the process of uh, ensuring that we we have that um you know my my great grandpa had to hide his metis identity because um he wasn't being hired um in, in battleford um and battleford is 
you know, known as a, a one of the most racist uh, places in Canada. It's, it's what it's been dubbed as. And so historically, that was something that my family lived through. Um, and he hiding that Métis identity um, now three generations later, that's something that I'm working really hard to, to reclaim. And I think Louis Riel um, and the work that he did um, and the reason why it's, uh, it's so honored is because it's, it's still happening. Um, you, you look at uh, even there's, I, I can promise you today that there's uh, textbooks that um, children in elementary school are still le- reading from and learning from that, that describe it as the Red River Rebellion, right? And, um, and that Louis Riel was a traitor. And so where you're still learning and, and unlearning um, uh, what uh, the, the true histories are and um, what, how colonial violence has um, really affected Métis people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well said, well said. Um, what are uh, some encouraging messages or um, things that you've learned along the way to encourage other Métis youth to get involved and, and to step forward? Yeah, so I think um, one of the first ones is that if if there's anyone listening in there, they maybe just recently found out that they're Métis or they've known that they're Métis and um, have been too shy or embarrassed or felt shame or fraudulent that they, you know, that they didn't know certain things. I think that, um, I think that I just want them to know that um, that's okay and at no fault of, of them as an individual. Um, and uh, I would invite them to do the work to honor um, their ancestors and their relatives um, in going through a process of reclaiming their culture and their and and learning their history um, and knowing that it isn't shameful. Um, you know, they're, they're victims of of uh, of colonial violence trying to erase that from them. So um, trying to just reshape that narrative. Um, and then the other thing about getting involved is something that um, I've I hear quite a bit actually um, from. Uh, people older than me, especially in the Métis Nation, is, um, is this general idea of that youth, youth aren't engaged and they're so excited for me to come in and engage the youth and, and get them involved. But, um, but I think youth are very engaged. Um, I think they're very involved and they're very interested. Um, but before now, um, especially without this position even really um, existing or or working in its capacity, um, youth haven't been given opportunities um, to uh, show their involvement. And they haven't, um, I think youth are often overlooked and and that they don't have um, the experience. But um, so that's something that I'm really excited um, to show is that I think youth are very engaged. And um, one thing that I've said when, um, if anyone's interested in, um, you know, being a representative for the youth council, all I've said is that if you're interested, that's the most important part. Um, Everyone has different talents um, and gifts that they bring to the table, but interest, if you're not interested, um, then it's not gonna work out. So if you're interested, we can make it work and we, and I'll work with you to um, figure out what your gifts are and then make sure that you can succeed in in that way and be be a part of um, something that I think is a lot bigger than each of us. when I think about youth engagement within the Métis Nation, I think about um, the sustainability of, of our um, self-governance and, and our community and, and our leadership. Um, because you, I think you, you typically look at Métis leadership and, and um, everyone, everyone's aging. There's, there's, no, there's a, about a 20 year gap um, between youth and, and, the, and uh, Métis leaders who are in power. So um, we really need to work on engage, um, involving the youth um, because they are engaged so that um, one day they, they can be in those positions or maybe they can be in those positions now. There's nothing to say they can't. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I think you kind of touched on some of the things that youth bring, right? Like their enthusiasm and energy and, that, and new ideas. Um, uh, what um, what what challenges do you see that uh, that kind of lie ahead in terms of kind of being the the first uh, president kind of thing and, and setting things up and and what's your vision for that? Yeah, and so I do. I just want to clarify there there was a, a president before me and and a council, although um, I'm. I'm not sure um, how active both they were and, and none of the positions were in elected. So this is the first time we're seeing a, a provincial election, which really signifies um, that the MNS is listening um, and recognizing that youth, youth have a very important role to play. I think um, probably the challenges that lie ahead is 
um, ensuring that youth are represented within the Métis Nation every step of the way. Um, you know, there's no mention of youth within the con MNS Constitution. There's no mention of youth within the uh, Métis Nation's Legislative uh, Act. There's no mention, uh, you know, other than um, involving four youth delegates. Um, there's like a one-line thing in, in the MNLA's um, legislation but so making sure that um you know the Métis Nation is a, is in the process of constitutional reform and so to me um it's a must that youth are are represented not just myself not myself as president of the youth council but um the regional youth representatives and all of the youth from each region they need to be involved in that constitutional reform especially if the Métis Nation wants um to see a sustainable government so the council will be, okay, so obviously it's led by you, but then what are kind of the other positions? So there's like representatives from each local kind of thing or? Yeah, so the council is made up of the regional youth representatives in the same way that the provincial Métis council has regional representatives. Um, so kind of a, you know, the kids table of what the, what the uh, provincial Métis council looks like. Um, and one of the things that uh, I wanna do with the council is make sure that um, a regional youth representative um, sits on one of the minister's portfolios um, and is and is a voting member and an active member in the work that's being done. Um, so that when we when we meet as a youth council, they can report on um, all of the work that's being done throughout the entire MNS, not just um, the minister of youth portfolio, which is which would be under me. Um, I think a lot of the times, uh, especially when we're including youth, we kind of silo youth and we say, okay, you work on youth things. Well, youth things are, are everything. Youth things are health. Um, they are, I'm talking about post-secondary, they are talking in, about um, economic development, environmental development, um, land securements. So youth really need to be involved in, in all those conversations. And, and so that's something that I, I want to do. And, and also, um, there haven't, hasn't really been a lot of, of work done or um, with youth council in the past. And so one of the things that I hope to do is um, creating space so that each youth representative can create action plans for their region um, so that uh, we can have targeted, um, targeted action, targeted work being done. Because like I said, um, concerns and, and in, or interests in the, in the north are going to be a lot different in the south. They're going to be a lot different if you're urban or if you're um, rural. So uh, really making sure that um, people are represented in the, and um, setting up the youth council so that youth have what they need um, to be the change makers and the drivers for change in their own communities. So what is the definition of a Métis youth? I imagine it's like an age range, but what is that? Yeah, so the age uh, is uh, 16 to 29. Um, so it's quite a big age range. I know um, the age range for BC is 15 to 30, so a little bit bigger there, but yeah, 16 to, to 29, um, and which that, that itself offers a lot. You know, I, I'm 25 now, so um, I will just be ending my, uh, I'll be 29 when, um, when my term ends, it's a four-year term, um, and even then I feel um, 29 is, is obviously an incredibly different um, experience than a 16 year old. So um, figuring out ways to include even those different age dynamics, uh, a part of the council is going to be really important. Fantastic. So, I mean, it sounds like there's good opportunity for like a variety of, of ages and that kind of thing. Are the, are the youth representatives uh, elected as well for each region or are they appointed or how does that work? Um, so I'm still learning about the specific process. I don't necessarily know if there's um, a, a, a transparent uh, and streamlined process for all representatives um, right now, and that's something that I hope to change. Um, to my understanding, it's the, the regional council um, that goes about appointing the youth representative. Um, and so I'm, I plan to work with each uh, regional representative to, uh, and hopefully each region, regional council to just uh, meet them and, and let them know um, that how, how we plan to, um, I guess, uh, Fill, fill the positions and, and making sure that it's it's fair for for everyone who wants to to be a part of it um, and then also recognizing that their you know youth may want to be a part of a part of it but they don't necessarily have the capacity because I mean they they're students right or they're um, there's so many reasons why um, youth may not have the capacity to be a part of it so um, I, I plan to have committees within the council that will include um, non-council members as well so maybe you can be a part of it in, in a 
in a, in a different way. Um, still very important, but um, that it's just uh, more responsive to the capacity that, that they may have. That's awesome. It sounds like there are a lot of opportunities to get involved. Um, um, what, uh, what challenges do you see lie ahead for just Métis people in general um, and, and how the youth can help with that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, as we're noticing, especially in media, um, the topic of identity and, and what that means. And so um, to me, um, I think it, it brings, I, as, a, as a SunTEP student, I think of education. Um, and I think that um, what, the, what we've seen in the media surrounding education has, has signaled to me um, the lack of uh, education and awareness um, and understanding of what it means to be Métis um, from, from everybody within Canada, right? There's conversations happening, happening everywhere. And so um, that's why I really encourage um, youth who um, to, to not be ashamed of, of, you know, whether or not they, what they know or what they don't know. And to, um, I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges is um, finding ways to, to learn more about our culture and our history before um, we lose elders who are so, are vital, right? Um, to to transferring that knowledge, um, we're really, I think, in a the Mitch of language is in a state of uh, it's almost in extinct in extinction. Um, so I, I think even we we should consider this being a, a true truly a crisis and, and declaring that as so that we the Mitch of language is almost becoming extinct. One of the things that I, I'm really excited for that is um, not. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about um, the policies and, and transforming the council, but um, one of the things that I'm the most excited for is uh, hoping to start a, a Métis youth summer camp that focuses on uh, cultural and historical teachings, leadership development, and relationship building that um, that we can just come together, you know, and, and be on the land and, and in a really um, genuine way. Um, and just, you know, when I think of, I, I've never been to a summer camp, but I've seen the movies and it just seems um, so fun and um, endearing and you make lifelong friendships and relationships and, and using that as an opportunity to, to bring in elders and, and learn from um, a diverse, diverse elders. I think that's really key. Um, and also uh, I think this is just a, another really exciting way to, you know, create jobs for Métis youth to, to be a part of, a part of this um, in a, different capacity if, if they if they have that to give um but just yeah really um creating as many opportunities as we can um to to learn from each other and to learn from our elders um so that we can hopefully pass pass on that information to future generations that's awesome great answer and i love i love that vision for a camp and you could incorporate language into that as well i know there are like Cree language camps and that kind of thing and so I, I, I've actually talked to uh, Belinda Daniels quite a bit about like getting a Michif language camp going kind of thing. Norman yeah. And, yeah. I think that it would be, be yeah, I think it would be so fun. I think, you know, um, the, the Provincial Métis Council wants that there to be a youth conference and, and that's really exciting, but I think youth conferences is, is very, is very different from, you know, just being at a summer camp and, and right. And just sitting around a fire or, um, there's so many opportunities to just build, uh, genuine relationships and connection, um, to, uh, each other, but to yeah. Métis culture and to Métis history. And, and yeah, exactly. Inviting, um, elders and, and language keepers, uh, to share that and, and provide their teachings, um, from that they've learned and, and ensuring that there's a diverse representation of, uh, of those educators, um, with us so that we can really get a, a, a full and genuine, um, learning experience and it'll just be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 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 and important to be out on the land too, right? Like, yeah, to keep those connections with the land. Well, I think we've, uh, um, I think we've kind of used up most of our time here. It went by so fast, but it's, it's been so great talking to you, Autumn. And I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you do with the, with the youth. It sounds like a challenging, but really rewarding um, experience and congratulations on your election and uh, good luck. Uh, with with all of that going forward and we, we look forward to, to what you're going to bring to the province so um, Kishi Marcy to our, our relative tonight uh, Autumn Leroy Smith the new president for the Métis Youth Council for Métis Nation Saskatchewan Niwagamaganak all are my relations and believe me we are all related so act like you've got relations this is Auntie Andy signing out from Homelands originally produced on CFCR Community Radio 90.5 FM in Saskatoon Homelands of the Métis and Treaty 6 Territory CFCR.ca Follow us on Twitter at Métis Homelands 
or if you have comments, questions, or guest suggestions, email metihomelands at gmail.com. This episode will also be viewable on our YouTube channel, Homeland, so subscribe today. Marcy, thank you for listening, and Akoshi Kawapa Matinawa Mina. That's all. We'll see you later.